right here. And also remember, this is a developer build of the game, so there may be bugs and little things that happen. But I think we should kind of get into the gameplay because that's, that's what we want. We to should. Think. We should. The Let's bugs are water. just part of the fun of it, right? <laughs> 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 Angel, this like please remove me. So let's 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 take a look at the uh, autumn. So I think I think best things to let you guys do is kind of talk. What is the car that we've got? So yeah, we are. So we're in a, a different player house from uh, last week, and we have got a Jeep Grand Cherokee Track Hawk. Uh, he read from the top of the screen. <laughs> uh, what Andy uh, just did there um, is he applied one of the new off-road uh, body kits that we have brought to the game in Forza Horizon 4. I am reliably informed there are about 12 of them in the game that you can apply to uh, some of the more extreme off-road uh, vehicles that are great for, for the world of Forza Horizon. Um, and Andy is sporting one of them. Uh, now, as he leaves his house um, with little care for property damage <laughs> um, and, and we we are in uh we're in the highlands we're in the yeah, the yeah. north of the map which we haven't really shown anyone uh, yet uh in an area of the world that's kind of bits of beautiful scotland right yeah so there's there's two specific areas that we we used as reference so there's glencoe uh, which people don't know like google that place it's an incredible uh, looking part of the world amazing vista so it was a real obvious choice for us in terms of location selection but there's also a place called rannoch moor which uh, again is another scottish location so this is a, a bit of a mashup of those two areas uh, which we've, we've sort of selected the best bits from and created this section of the map it looks uh, it looks stunning yeah and also you'll notice we wanted to show you guys something about the the verticality that we've hinted wow. at before when it comes to this particular part of the uh, well, this particular game, especially versus what we had in Horizon 3. So we really listened to the community. We, we knew that the guys wanted something that had a bit more verticality associated with it. Uh, that's a barn find right there yeah, as well. No, I was just thinking... um, spoilers, yeah, that's where that guy is. The, um, the, first, the, first, <laughs> the first one, you need, if you need to find, the, if you're obsessed with finding all the barn finds, they're in Horizon 4. And that's who, the... who built that at the top of a mountain? Mm -hmm. it, it makes, it where makes else would sense. you put one? This, this guy, this guy, guy yeah. Lives there. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, and as Ben was saying, like much more vertical uh, world than I think we've ever built before, um, which is great when you're when you're showing off the, the Scottish Highlands and the Lake District. Uh, it really benefits uh, from it, and I, I know our fans have been uh, asking for more mountains, no, more uh, mountain roads, switchbacks, mm. and certainly this game uh, delivers them, which is which is wonderful. Well, it's great with off-road vehicles as well. And I remember last week he promised something to the viewers, right? You said it's going to happen. All right, and it's taking a look at the world map for the first time because like, you see it, it's a huge world. Like, can you talk us It through? is a huge world, yeah. So we're going to sh uh, show by popular demand uh, the world map. So that's where we are, sort of northeast of the world. Um, and as we move south, we're down into the sort of lake district, mm -hmm. which we showed mm -hmm. you quite a lot of uh, last week. You can see, I think this is a pretty full map. I think I'm right in saying that we've kind of unlocked a lot of stuff uh, that's on uh, on the map there. And people will see, I think, the things that they're looking out for. I know a lot of people were asking about uh, the Goliath and whether it was going to return. Um, if you if you notice there, uh, it has. Um, a really cool thing I think we've done this time is, as well as the Goliath, we have a bunch of really massive routes. There's the Gauntlet, there was the, um, I've forgotten the name of the other one, the Titan is there as well. So there's lots of uh, really big routes for people who like big routes in Horizon games, which is great. And there's Edinburgh. And Edinburgh, well. yeah. Yeah. yeah, which we're going to see. Also, there's loads of comments as well, because one of the big things, as I've noticed, is trees. All right, so Ben, you'll be happy <laughs> agreeing with you in the comments. Are you lusty gaming? I love trees, Ben. Great. Uh, so you've got loads of tree lovers it's across it. It's not just me. It's not just me. It, I good. don't blame you. They do look incredible as well. Uh, but we're actually getting up to a bit that I think everyone gets really excited about in Horizon 4. It's a big part of the game. Showcases. So Ben is going to leave us for a little bit now. Yeah. Yep. And we're going to be joined by Aaron, who's going to talk us through showcases. So thank you very much for the, talking to us about trees, Ben. Uh, <laughs> uh, but thank you, Aaron, talk for joining us. And can you just tell us a little bit about uh, showcases in Horizon 4? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, <clears throat> so for those people that don't know what showcases are, um, they've been a, like a, a pillar of the Horizon games up until this point. Um, and what we've done in Horizon 4 is push them to the like the next level with what we've got, um, using what Ben mentioned earlier in terms of like the verticality compared to um, Horizon Three, it's it's going to make a big difference. 
No, I, I'm, I'm pretty excited as well, because I, I, I've always wanted to know, is one of the things, what's kind of your thought process of kind of going into making these showcases? Well, we always say at the start of a Horizon game, and, and definitely at the start of Horizon 4, like, where do we go with the showcases? You know, how can we top what we did last time? I think we had some great showcases in Horizon mm. 3. Um, and there was some head scratching at the start of Horizon yeah. 4, like, what can we do? Um, I, th I think that the showcases we've got in the game, we, we showed one at E3, we're going to show another one now, and I don't think we're going to show any more until, until the game is out and we'll allow people to, to find them for themselves. But I think that the showcases we've got in this game are, are just spectacular. And you, you said earlier, like, they turned the whole formula up to 11. Mm -hmm. um, as I think we'll see now with the, the behemoth. Right, let's get into it. I'm, I'm kind of, because I saw, saw a little bit of this earlier, and I was like, kind of, this, I think it's the first reaction you always have. You just kind of like scream, like, whoa. Uh, it's like when the, you know, when like the music comes kind of in. So, presumably, nobody knows exactly what we're going to be uh, racing just yet, and it's revealed here in this sort of pre race cinematic. And obviously, uh, at the top of a mountain in Scotland, it is a hovercraft. It is a hovercraft, <laughs> the perfect natural habitat <laughs> of the hovercraft. Um, so, Showcases are, are quite challenging from like a dev point of view and like this one we 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 spend months on them really and they they go around like all the different teams. So from working on it, I'll go away and then come back to it and VFX have been on it or cinematics have done some some bits at the start of the race and stuff. So it, it changes as it goes on. Um, and with with all of that it's really it, it is really a team effort for these yeah. big showpiece events that we have. It must be really exciting with seasons as well, just kind of like seeing them. So, right, should we kind of get straight into the, yeah. straight into it? Don't crash this time, Andy. Right. <laughs> right, there's the, right. Also, guys, remember, if you have any questions about showcases, <coughs> do drop them in the chat as we kick this one off. <laughs> right, so do you want to talk us through it a little bit? Yeah, certainly. So we've started up at the top of the mountain. Um, as we saw, and we're coming down into this beautiful valley. Big slow-mo jump there towards the viaduct. Um, we, had a, we had a previous route for this, was down by the lakes, which is the general direction we're heading. Um, but in true Horizon style, it wasn't, it wasn't, there wasn't enough. It wasn't down a mountain. It needed, it needed some extra, extra special sauce on it and uh, throwing a hovercraft and this wonderful Toyota truck because I think mountain, we've all thought at one point, what, what would it be like to race a, a hovercraft Exactly. Down the and, exactly. Uh, and now we, now we get to find out. A um, bit of inside baseball, actually. Um, the hovercraft was actually, we built it for Horizon 3, and we had an idea for a showcase using it in, in that game, which we, we just never really got it to work, I guess, is, yeah. the, um, is the thing. Um, and it was really only when we sort of started playing um, oh, that's nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> when we started uh, uh, at, like, playing around with it in, in this world, um, again, you know, like around this sort of area of the world in particular, um, that it started to really come together. And obviously making it smash through lots of stuff, um, yep. that, that worked as well. Being, being the size of what it is and, and how hovercrafts move around, they do drift mm. a lot, um, which is going to prove a bit of a challenge for a player as most of the showcases in previous games have been say like planes or so the, you've either been like them flying over the top of you whereas this is actually like front and center it's right in the race route with you it's um, reacting, yeah. which is which is another another thing to the deal with it's just wrecking absolute havoc which is a shame because we're coming down to um thanks to you <laughs> 360 <laughs> Right. Cool. Have we... Uh... Excellent. Right, so remember this, guys, this is a developer build yeah. of the game, so we will kind of just get straight back into the gameplay. Uh, but I think it's actually a good opportunity to talk a bit, a bit more about Showcase, because previous games, it's been one of the biggest features of the game. It's like something that everyone's got really excited about. What's kind of the... With Horizon 4, we've talked about kind of expanding those. What's kind of the next things that you kind of want to do with the showcase with seasons? So there's, there's, uh, I think I'm right in saying there's a there's a showcase for every season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and um, obviously, you know, different ones make, make use of uh, of different um, uh, of different seasons. Um, and what we're going to do as part of our um, 
uh, post-launch. Um, is that for you, that note, or is that for... Do you want to throw oh, me the Andy, controller? Do you want to throw me the controller? Yeah. Certainly. Right, here we go. I can do this while we, uh, while we, while we chat. Um, so, Braden is asking, why is there a hovercraft on a mountain? That is a perfectly reasonable uh, question. Well, when you, you, you can tell us, is this just like regular occurrence when going around the Scottish Highlands, is kind of like <laughs> yeah. seeing a hovercraft like kind of go flying Be down? Being from Scotland, I can confirm that that happens a, it happens <laughs> a lot. Um, why not? Oh, indeed, indeed. Why not? Um, this is Horizon, so... So we are just turning off our notifications so that hopefully um, oh, that so. doesn't happen again. Uh, yeah. Right, here we go. This is, this is what... Right. So we're going to switch boxes. Uh, okay. We're switching boxes. Yes. It works. Um, yeah, but to your question earlier, the, another thing that we're going to be doing um, post-launch, and we've been talking a little bit about this, uh, is continue to update uh, the game with, with new things, with yep. twists on existing gameplay, um, on that sort of monthly cadence which comes from having seasons lasting a week each and therefore four, uh, you know, a full year lasting uh, pretty much a month. Uh, and one of the things we're going to do with the showcases, I think, is, uh, is kind of remix them um, post-launch so that you can play them a bunch of different ways, you know, different times of day, different season, different vehicles, um, and really sort of um, uh, get more challenge and more value out of these uh, these events. Yeah, it's like the one we saw at E3 as well with the with the bikes. Is there was that thread the needle moment? Is there like other bits and pieces like that we, we that we can expect as well? Because that was really exciting, so even though there is I crashed. honestly some uh, nut stuff coming up in showcases. But kind of like I said at, at the top, I feel like having mm. given away. Uh, two of them pre-launch is enough. You mean this kind of ease back? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, let, let players find and discover themselves. I mean, cause... There, is, there is legit one showcase in there which I think will blow people's minds. <laughs> Nobody is going to be expecting it. Um, but kind of the fun of it um, is, is waiting for people to experience that themselves mm. uh, at launch. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like a tease as well. It's just like, oh, you've got, we've got one that will absolutely blow you away, but you'll have to wait. Right, until uh, 28th, 28th of September if you've got the Ultimate Edition and, and then the 2nd of October, October that's right. Yeah. right, if yeah. you've got Xbox Game Pass or uh, release of the game. Um, there's a question there actually that I want to take uh, about soundtrack uh, from Makusha. I've been hearing, I've been asked this question a lot on Twitter as well. I feel like we, we need to speak to it. Um, the, the situation with soundtrack is that it, it gets worked on really, really um, mm. right to the last minute, uh, basically. You know, there's, there's a lot of moving parts going into Horizon soundtrack, which is why we always generally announce it around about launch date. Uh, and that's what we'll be doing this time. Uh, obviously, we're playing uh, with music off. Um, uh, so yeah, so that's, the, that's the situation with music. Stay tuned on that one. Obviously, music r remains an incredibly important part of Horizon. Um, our sh soundtrack is shaping up really, really well, and we'll announce it later. So shall we, um, with that, shall we have a, another crack at the showcase, or shall we uh, have, start having a look at uh, Forza Horizon? Let's do you move on, I think, because we've got a ton of stuff to, to, to get through. Um, and we were, we were pretty much at the end uh, there. Um, it would be great to show some people um, how we're doing with uh, Horizon Life. Yes. So so, um, Aaron, big thank you for joining Sorry, us yeah. as well and showing us showcases. I'm really excited to see some more. Uh, Ralph, I believe you, this, you're, you're off for the rest of the week now as well. I am, yes. So yes. you will return next week, but thank you very much for talking us through there. We're now going to be joined by another Ben and Mike uh, to talk through uh, Thoughts of Life. So thank you very much and we'll see you in a little bit. Remember, guys, if you've got any questions, do go ahead and drop them in the comment section because uh, like Ralph and the team are also looking at them and answering them and we'll be answering them right here on stream. So go ahead, put them through, ask anything you want to about Forza Horizon 4, such an awesome season. But there was a big question last week, right? Ben and Mike, thank you very much for joining us, is what is your favorite season? So Ben, I think we should start with you. Ooh. Right. What is your favorite season? That is a tough opening one. It's going to have to be winter, I think. It's winter, so you're, yeah. you're kind of the same as Ralph. You're kind of like living yeah. in the, win the, the winter champion, which we're going to be looking at on stream next week, uh, which is 7 p.m. next Tuesday. Uh, what about you, Mike? Uh, I think I go with spring. I think spring is uh, basically rains almost all the time in spring, which is why all the surfaces have got this really like slick uh, cover of water, which just adds that extra layer of complexity and difficulty to all handling. So it's always that little bit more tricky, a little bit harder to control all those powerful rear wheel drive vehicles that I tend to favour. So, or well, if you're a terrible driver like me, it means you're just going to go flying off the road a lot more. Um, <laughs> Maybe swap to all wheel drive uh, for spring. Yeah, that's, that's probably going to be my go-to. But I think E3, there was a huge discussion about the shared world. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, 
Of course. So, um, yeah, obviously at E3 we showed on stage a, a shared demo where we had loads of people on stage all playing together. Um, today we're going to show you a bunch more stuff, a load, of, a load of things we've not shown anybody else before. And we're doing that with the help of uh, some of our developers upstairs who've managed to put, da put down their keyboards and mouses for a little bit. They're not stopped fixing bugs for an hour or so so they can help us show some, uh, some of the shared world of Forza Horizon 4. Um, I think I'll start off just by talking you through the sort of, um, the sort of genesis of this idea, how I ended up in this place. Um, Obviously, we're, we're developers, but we're absolutely gamers as well. And uh, as developers, I think we know that uh, when you make uh, a video game into a shared world, you uh, you bring with it a load of um, a load of emergent ambient fun. There's things that yeah. uh, real players can do in an online world that you would never be able to create an AI player to do it. Um, obviously, we have driver uh, yeah. in our game, and we've had those in previous titles, and they are brilliant at replicating a racing driver. I, I think a good thing to do as well is just because we've kind of had a. Had with Shared Worlds and being mentioned at E3, is let's actually have a quick look at E3 before we kind of get into Shared Worlds. So sure, yeah. let's take a look at that right now, guys. Let's take a look at the E3 uh, video. Today, I am excited to show you the world premiere of Forza Horizon 4, set in beautiful, historic Britain. Forza Horizon 4 features dynamic seasons in a shared open world, and seasons change everything. Forza Horizon 4 is coming to Xbox One and Windows 10 on October 2nd, and I am thrilled to announce that it will be included in Xbox Game Pass on the same day. When Horizon started, you know, Ralph came out, the trailer, you know, people were just screaming. So it was great, you know, sitting in the back, Alan and I kind of took a seat back in the mezzanine. And just watching the reaction ripple through the crowd was just fantastic. To make that announce live on stage, represent the team back at Playground as well, um, yeah, it was a real thrill. We have just unveiled the beautiful McLaren Senna. Andy, thank you so much for bringing this wonderful machine with you. Hey, thank you, Graham, for having us here. It was an honor to be here and launch the McLaren Senna at the Mixer booth. Tell me the specs for this thing. I mean, just how fast is it? It is incredible performance for a road car. It's zero to 60 in 2.7 seconds. It has, um, as we said, 800 horsepower, 800 kilograms of downforce, all coupled to a car that only weighs 2,961 pounds. It's fantastic to have it as a cover car for Forza Horizon. Graham, it's fantastic to be here. It's been great to be a part of Xbox here at E3. All right, everybody, there you go. The McLaren Senna, absolutely incredible. You've seen it here, and don't worry, you'll be able to experience it for yourself very soon in Forza Horizon 4. So that was E3, but now let's take a look at that shared world and we can talk about Forza Life and everything like that. So what, we, what, can, what can you do in this shared world and what we see? Yeah, so right now we can see uh, the guys are connected to a shared world. As I said, these are some of our, some of our team upstairs are helping us out demo this today. Uh, when the game launches uh, it, on October 2nd, you'll be able to join with up to 72 people on a server. We don't quite have that many here now. We don't have that many people that can stop fixing bugs and finishing <laughs> up the game to come and give us our time. So we've got a few guys here with us now who are going to help us uh, to demo the game. Um, as I was saying earlier, um, driver tiles were great in races, and you can still absolutely race against driver tiles in races. but. When you're, in the, when you're in the open world, um, there's an emergent fun and a character that real people can bring that um, you, just, you just can't create with an AI. On last week's show, uh, if any people tuned in for that, you know, we spent a long time just chasing sheep around a field and trying to herd them up onto the, yeah. the white horse. We'd never be able to make an AI system that could like, authentically recreate that experience, but uh, in Forza Horizon 4, as you're driving around, those emergent experiences just happen. E even now when we're in when we're playing in development. I, I think um, we've just ooh. got to point something straight away as well. So there's, there's that auto ghost feature, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. So Ben, do you want to touch that? Yeah, cool. So um, auto ghost is this really awesome way of just making our online world feel kind of super welcoming to yeah. everybody. Because one of the things that is not nice when you go online is people crashing into you, is kind of people griefing you if you're trying to be still or take a photo or something like that. So what Auto Ghost does is it says if somebody is not your friend, is not in your convoy and they, you kind of haven't allowed it, they can't grief you at all. You would just pass straight through them. So it's just kind of one of those things that kind of makes it more accessible. Because I think that's been one of the biggest questions that I've seen being asked is 
that shared world and then offline. So it's just kind of creating that barrier between the two. Yeah, like, it's just yeah. trying to kind of bring the friction and bring the barriers right down. Um, really cool thing about Auto Ghost, we've just done a speed zone there, but one like kind of massive, massive piece of community feedback that we got was uh, traffic in drift zones and speed zones. Like, regularly people giving us grief about how bad they are and I will hold my hands up it does get annoying if you're nailing the perfect drift and you smack headlong into a traffic car so we've used the same system to ghost out the cars when you're doing the speed zones and the drift zones so you can kind of perfect those zones to exactly, kind of get yeah. the perfect experience and nail the drifts and get those kind of like really high scores that yeah. you want to um, so also offline mode and shared world uh, it's, it's seamless like transition between them can you tell us a little bit more about it yeah, I think the best thing to do would be to demo it because it's something that we're really proud of. If Andy wants to, he can just pause the game at any point and go offline. You can't and get Andy to pause the game though, that's, that's the hard bit. He'll be fine. And uh, instantly everyone will get taken out of your world and eventually replaced with Dragatars who start to spawn in. And this is... So that's it? That's just yeah. kind of like you're now on offline mode? Yeah, there's no way around for it, it's just brilliant. Yeah, there and done. No, no loading screens, no cinematics or anything. You can see a, a driver tars uh, just there up the road. Uh, if Andy quickly goes back and again reselects Horizon Life, mm -hmm. um, it will find him a session. This takes around 10 seconds or so. So if Andy just drives around now, um, once once that's connected, we should see all his, all Andy's friends who we were just playing with um, pop back into the world. Um, that yeah. uh, but while, while we're in for that as well, does Abshu just ask, can you turn off auto ghosting in a private lobby? You can convoy up with people you know mm -hmm. and have collisions turned on. So, so you can still get those crashes if you kind of want. Absolutely, want. yeah. So that's cool. Also, we've had another, we've got another question from uh, DX Sizzle 99. Remember, guys, if you've got any questions for Horizon 4, drop them in the comments below. Is uh, what side of the road is the main side? Okay, because it's one of those big questions. The okay. main side. The main side. Which, which 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 side of the road do you drive on? I mean, I drive through fields, so you know. <laughs> that's that's an answer to the question. Everyone goes through as the crow flies. You kind of crash through the fence and stuff, but you know, with the with the like civilian traffic, right? Which side of the road are they driving on Horizon Four? So we drive on the left, um, which is the same as Horizon Three, but you drive wherever you want, really. It's, it's so, safe, but... so we actually blinked and missed it there because it was so seamless. But whilst Andy was driving on that road, he. Uh, he reconnected into that session, all his friends popped back in. There was no loading screen, no pause, um, entirely seamless. And now we're uh, into photo mode. Yeah, so... Online so. photo mode. So how does that work? So it just works like it does offline. You go into photo mode, everything that you can see stops. You see all these cars here, which you might ordinarily have driver cars in free roam or in a race, um, if you think back to Horizon 3. Yeah. And now this is all the people you're playing with. Obviously, in their game, they're probably donating around or they might have driven off, but you had the perfect opportunity and you wanted to take a picture. So you go to photo mode and there you go. And uh, if someone else is in photo mode, how is there a way that you can tell or is it just kind of... So are they just going to like ghost out so you can see if someone's in photo mode? Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, a fact. I think... Everything gets communicated. There we go. There we go. So yeah. Matthew upstairs has helped us out. Uh, his car now ghosts out so we know we, we, he's not going to interfere with us. And a little, little bubble pops up above his game attack to tell us that he's in photo mode. We have also keep, keep getting these little chat messages because I think one of the biggest barriers with online gaming is not everyone wants to go on and have to put a microphone on and you've kind of worked on implementing a system. Um, what, what is that in Horizon 4? So this is another one of those cool things that we're trying to make online as, as seamless and as easy as possible. Um, it's not always easy to, to plug a mic in and start chatting, and not everybody wants to do that anyway. And you've also got the kind of language barrier as well. So quick chat is just this huge collection of um, really fast phrases that we've got. You can assign four of them, and you can assign kind of different ones for free roam and race. Yeah. And you just get to fire communication back and forth between people. So like, let's go exploring, or um, maybe help kind of lead someone to a barn find, but you can also have things like protect me if you're playing king and someone's chasing you. It's really, really cool. I think I love that language barrier a bit as well, as just like kind of how I can break that down. But um, that's thoughts, a little look at Forza Life. We've also got a few questions in the chat asking us if we can look at the map again. We will take a look at the map again later on. Uh, but should we talk about Forza Thon? Because I think just before we do, just sorry, um, we, saw that we saw both of those guys taking a photo there. One of the new features that we've got in uh, Forza Horizon 4 uh, is that as well as taking sharing those photos, which we've always had, and we've always uh, had these big communities around yeah. Reddit and our forums and stuff like that where people would share them, there's competitions and things. Uh, we've now made a change where uh, in game you can now uh, you can now get rewarded for that. And there's actually like a whole a whole campaign around it. I could borrow the controller a second, that'd be. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> um, 
So in here, which is the screen that we call My Horizon Life, yep. this tracks all your progress across the whole game. So, um, and one of those is a photographer like campaign. So it's basically a, a series of challenges and rewards, uh, which which reward you for being a great photographer. So you you take photos, you upload them. Other people download them and like them, and then you basically get get rewards in game and your challenges and stuff to do in game. And this screen, My Horizon Life, like each one of these little tiles represents a, a sort of mini campaign that you can take part in. So if you want to play the game and all you want to do is playground games modes, which is like our fun, uh, like king and infected type modes, you, there's actually a campaign for that, and you can just play the game that way, and you'll still be able to level up and get all progress like, and progress exactly. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to share that before we jumped on to uh, Forza yeah, Font. No, so I'll hand back over to Andy now for that next That's episode. awesome. But let's let's get into Forza Font. So that, that's such a really nice nice addition into going in. But Forza Font, what is it? So Forza Font is a, it's a guaranteed piece of gameplay, kind of. There's three flavors of it now. Every hour, every day, every week. Mm -hmm. It's one of the main reasons that I kept going back into Horizon 3, kind of week after week. Um, and we've taken it and we've massively expanded it. We're going to show Fortathon live here, which is a brand new, brand new piece of Fortathon. Um, and as I said, it's every hour, so Fortathon live is the hourly, the hourly uh, system. And this is another one of those uh, ways that we're making online really easy and really fun. So what happens here is every every hour the server says. For anybody who wants to take part in this, get over here, you get the little message, you can set a route there, um, and a kind of radius appears on the map. Yep. And anyone who turns up gets <coughs> grouped together, and they immediately then compete to do a kind of cooperative challenge with three stages. Um, we'll look at that in a little bit more detail when it starts, but if I go into the kind of rest of Forza Von, so we've got daily challenges, which are like, like the ones you remember from Horizon 3, so kind of bite-sized, simple things like earn three stars on a speed trap, or um, earn 100,000 points in a drift zone, right? Really simple ways that we just kind of reward you for coming back to the game that day and give you um, a reward for it. And then the weekly ones where you can think of it like a car story. So yeah. we get you to get into a particular really cool car. Um, maybe it's a car that's been in films or it's something that's kind of brand new and everybody's loving it. And then we give you a bunch of challenges and we'll extend the gameplay out there kind of half an hour plus. Like, this is the hourly stuff that we're heading towards at the minute. It looks amazing though. I just love how you've just kind of got this whole crew of players just kind of rushing towards the Forza Thon zone. It's, yeah, it is a real spectacle. And something that was just on screen there a second ago is uh, not only do you have the radius on the map um, and the message saying go over and get there, but we've managed to squeeze the blimp that just sits above it while it starts so you know exactly where to go. And the blimp will follow you around the world as you do the, uh, the challenges. So it's like the viewing platform, isn't it? Yeah. You've always got that kind of visual indication of where you need to be as well. Um, so you, it's it's every every single hour. What kind of what kind of because we're gonna we're gonna see them in a few seconds as well. What kind of challenges and races can you expect to have within a Fortathon? So Fortathon will give you a lot of the really cool open world stuff. So you'll be doing things like speed cameras, drift zones. Um, we'll put radius, uh, a radius on the map where you'll be banking skills, doing particular kind of um, certain types of skills like you'll see loads of people drifting around roundabouts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, also, like, what, what, so with, with these Forza Thumb live events, what are players going to be able to earn uh, by, by doing them? Ah, so I'll let Mike get into that one. Yeah, so all of the Forza Thumb things you just mentioned, so the daily, weekly and Forza Thumb live, all contribute, uh, all pay out in Forza Thumb points. Uh, it's a new currency that you can only get from Forza Thumb. Um, and that is spent in the Fortstone shop, uh, which is every week as the season changes. Uh, there's Fortstone shop, and it's restocked with uh, fresh content. A lot of that stuff is the stuff that you might otherwise only be able to get in wheel spin, so you only have a random yeah. chance of getting. But if you can wait for it to come with the Fortstone shop, then you can choose specifically. Oh, great! It's that legendary car I've been waiting for. Perfect opportunity for me to jump on and get that. Um, and it's, it's <laughs> there's always that thing as well because. Because there's, there's a daily challenges, weekly challenges, these things that happen every hour, you are constrained a little bit on how many points you can get. So you're never quite sure whether I should drop them all this week on, on that car because the one I really want might be next week. So there's always that nice like risk and reward element. I can see well. myself just like on for like 18 hours straight, just like hitting every Forza of on live for like, because there, there is that, there is a, the total points that you can earn by kind of hitting all those Forza on. I can just yeah, imagine yeah. just sitting there just like for hours and hours and hours, just kind of making sure I'm hitting every single one. And there's different stages to Forza thons aren't there it's not so how are they going to work once because we're, we're about to get into it in a minute uh, but how, the, how just before we get into that how many stages and what's the progress like within a fortathon life 
So the stages within a Thoughts on Life, there's three, um, and they kind of increase in difficulty. Basically, everybody in the group gets 15 minutes, and you get given your first objective. And then if you manage to complete that, you'll qualify for stage two, and so on and so forth, all the way to stage three. Um, it works brilliantly when there's loads and loads of people because you can smash through it, get all the way to the end of stage three, and everybody gets the same reward regardless of kind of how good you are. Yeah. Um, but if there's only a couple of people, maybe you just happen to be playing with your friend and you were the only people who jumped in, you still get the full 15 minutes to get through as far as you can. Uh, it's also just from a few comments as well, because remember guys, get involved in the comments, ask your questions about Horizon 4, anything to do with Forts or Thon as well, which we can answer right now. But there's like, um, there's a few things like, that blimp is a nice touch, I've got to say. It is a nice touch. Yeah, I would thanks. say it's an awesome there. touch. I agree. And then, and then the, that little announcer as well, just kind of coming in, and boom. All right, so we're off. So can yes. you uh, kind of talk us through the first event? So this is stage one. You've just seen it on the screen there. It says get to the speed zone. Um, and as I said, these are cooperative challenges. So everybody is now racing towards a speed zone that's been marked on the map. You can see at the bottom of the screen there, it says uh, zero miles an hour. Ah, this is really cool. Ah, so and so. Andy has uh, dem demonstrated online rewind there. So uh, <laughs> much like, uh, we, as we said earlier, online photo mode, it just works. Uh, rewind is <coughs> It's been a staple feature of the Forza franchise for a while, and Andy, by nearly stacking it into that wall, has ably demonstrated that uh, it's, it's, it's still there in the game. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so of course, everyone else keeps going forward. You basically reverse your mistake, and then you're able to apply a bit more brake and, and catch yourself. That's uh, really cool. It's kind of like showing that also ghost feature again as well. It's kind of that thing where you just kind of see the cars that you would normally collide with mm. just like seamlessly just kind of disappear. Um, so progress bar, so we've got, we're in the speed zone now, yeah. so uh, how can you kind of gauge your progress? So when you're, when you're in the speed zone here, you can see that that's your current attempt that you're doing. You'll get to the end of the speed zone and you'll bank that and you'll bank that into the group target so you'll see that the UI appears and it will fill up showing the group progress, it shows what you just added to it. When that then fills up, you've essentially completed the stage that you're on. So it's got this kind of really nice, fun feeling that everybody's chipping away at this like overall target. And when somebody does something really awesome, you'll suddenly see it like there, like shoot up a kind of huge amount. I think I also really like how it's a co-op feature, as well as like you mentioned earlier, with it being that there aren't, a, there isn't a leaderboard within the group. It is a group effort to complete this. Yes. Um, so that's something we were really conscious of because often when you're playing like an online game for the first time, you're not very good. The last thing you want to do is have somebody basically saying, I'm carrying you, get out. It's just, it's not very nice. So there's no, there's no leaderboard, there's no kind of mention of individual scores. It's just completely, purely cold. So you're just kind of nailing it to kind of all get the best reward possible together. Uh, there's a few other questions as well. We're moving on to the second challenge as well. Um, how, Alex Games asks us, have you put an area of off-road in the game? Please respond because I love off-road. That is coming up later in the stream, which we will see once we've done finished Forts of Thumb, which is cool. And also, Josh Miller asks, are there ambient sounds in the background? Absolutely, yeah. So um, our audio guys have done incredible work uh, having full audio soundscapes for every season. So each region of the map in every season has got a unique soundscape. So uh, the countryside sounds different in winter to it does in autumn, to it does in spring, you'll have completely different things. So then if you move to Edinburgh, then they'll have a completely different soundscape again, which again changes based on the seasons. Um, I think Edinburgh even has like the cannons going off, doesn't it? The ceremonial cannons. Yeah, I mean it goes, uh, it goes beyond that. We've, so I have been informed we've got regional bird song. Regional yeah. bird song. Regional bird song. Yeah. So for anyone who <laughs> is a bit of a twitcher, keep uh, an ear out for birds of your region appearing in your region and go. You're just gonna see Ben like sat in a tree, that's kind of like <laughs> leaning, going like, oh, do I do I hear that the, the right bird? Is that is that a blue tit or is that? I don't even know what the regional bird songs are, to be honest. Um, also, uh, Texas asks us motorways. We are going to be having a look at those later in this very stream, so don't go anywhere. Uh, but get your questions in, because we're coming up to the second challenge now, which is a speed trap. Yep. So is this? So what's kind of the progress now? So stage two, it gets diff more difficult every single one. Um, how, how long would you expect like a, a full team to kind of be able to get through? So I would expect a full team should definitely be able to complete all three stages within 15 minutes. It's one of those things that as we're constantly playing the game, we're still kind of fine tuning. Um, and in fact, we'll take some feedback from the guys upstairs playing with us here. But um, it does get harder in stage two and it'll get even harder in stage three. But uh, let's see how they do. Stage, the stage three I'm excited about because it's going to put Andy under pressure. And you guys are going to see it. It's the most challenging 
it is the most challenging one. Yeah. Um, and it's it's drifting, isn't it? So it's a, is it, it's what's the it's skill? Yeah. So stage three will be a skill area um, in a really really awesome like abandoned rail yard. So it's perfect for doing kind of gymkhana stuff. You know, loads of things to drift around, loads of stuff to smash, loads of like jumps to take. And in fact, they have. Uh, I've nearly nailed this one, in fact. They just blitzed that. I, I looked away for a second and suddenly it just went well, straight away. Right, here we go, round three. Right, so guys, involved in the chat, do you think Andy is going to be successful and not break his skill chain in the skill area, okay? Yes, yes or no, I think, I, I think I'm, I'm intrigued. What do you guys think? I'm gonna say... Do you have faith in Andy? That, this, this is the question. <laughs> you, you can see him getting nervous. <laughs> I want to say I've got faith in Andy. Um, that, does that mean you have faith? That doesn't seem like a very like, like confident answer. I want to say I have, it. I have got complete faith in Andy. I think, I think Andy might want to change car to give himself a better chance. This uh, is a very good point. So yeah. I think one of the new features that we've added, or tweaked I should say, is that um, any point now in the game, players are able to just uh, put, pause the game, and uh, change their car just and have it delivered to them right there in the world. Um, this was a feature that we actually had in uh, Horizon 3. Uh, it was a little hidden away and we also charged the player uh, in-game currency to do it. Um, now you can just pause a game, uh, select your car and it'll be delivered to you free, like super fast like you saw. Which is great for things like Forza Done Live where the type of challenge is changing all the yeah. time. Um, so obviously we had speed challenges at the start there and now we've got a skills one where I can tell Andy's uh, conscious that he's going to end up flipping his other car so he's gone for something that's a bit more planted. <laughs> He's this thing. He's, he's right, risen to the challenge. Yeah. Right. I, I'm just going to see what the chat are thinking. Are they fe feeling confident in Andy, or are they kind of like, feeling a bit as if he's he's going to crash? I think he'll miss the jump. Right. That is the big part of this. Well, we might miss the jump. He's taking it safe, so he's oh. going for the <laughs> smash everything kind of in the skill chain. The group is actually doing this really quickly as well. What what other kind of like tips and tricks would you kind of like offer players, like give players to kind of? do as well in these sports of on live challenges. So I would say, um, in terms of skill chains, key point is to <laughs> not let it bank, which Andy just got away with there, because the, the higher you get your multiplier, the, the bigger it will be, and you want to bank that massive skill chain at the end. So as you see, there are actually some players who've got some really big chains that they've been banking, but you don't want to be banking lots of little skill chains kind of frequently. You want to try and hold on to a huge one and get your combo all the way. Prof Toby, this PhD, has said, in Andy we trust. <laughs> right. He, I think that guy's he, got a PhD, so he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he is pulling this together. How much, so what's the total? Is it a million for the group progress? Or is it just going that? But, oh, someone's banked a lot, a big one. Yeah, so that was someone holding on to a huge chain. I think it'll be about a million and a half for this one. Andy's doing pretty well with that chain as well. He's not, he's not banked it. If there's a few more players holding on to big chains like that. This could be over pretty success. quickly, which is a pretty good time as well, like as a group. You've, they've managed to do it in around eight, like eight minutes, right, for the for the whole 15 minute challenge. Yeah, that is that is not bad going. Yeah. These guys are pretty good at the game. They've definitely played, <laughs> they've definitely played it before. <laughs> have they? Have they? <laughs> <laughs> they probably there haven't we made go. it or anything. Right, right, there yeah. we go. So that is the Forza Thorn Live yeah. event, which is like, they, they happen every hour, um, yep. All week round, every season. Every season, every hour on the hour. And uh, it's completely synced worldwide as well. So like, when you see it on your server, every player in the entire world will see that Forza Thon Live fires at the same time as well. Mm -hmm. And it'll be the same, the same Forza Thon Live for everyone. Um, also, Timmy the Kid has just came in and asked, what area of Britain is it set in or inspired by? Which particular part? I'm guessing the region that we're in, based on the, based on the question. So the region that we're in, do you know where? Yeah, this, this is kind of inspired by like rural South Edinburgh kind mm -hmm. of countryside. I also think we need to now do cross country, right? Which is a pretty exciting thing. Cross country races um, kind of showcase all the, the new big cut, like the four by fours. Yeah. Um, especially because yep. we're like the verticality of the world. Oh, no, so we're going to the motorway now. Right, actually, that was a question that was asked earlier. Are we going to the motorway? All right, so we're going to head to the motorway now and kind of talk through a little bit more of the world uh, as we're doing it. So what can other players expect from autumn? So from autumn, you will be getting, like any other season, you'll get a lot of awesome content, uh, content coming in. So you'll get just missile there on the minimap, but you'll get kind of specific events called out. These are like um, kind of seasonal championships. Uh, something we'll go into, into more detail later. Um, and you also get your kind of Forza Thon as well, so that changes every week with the season. 
Um, never mind the fact that the whole world, the whole world changes, the whole world is a completely like different driving experience. We also, I think we're going to get Ben in as well because we're going to have three Bens. So, oh. Mike, right. thank you very yeah. much for talking thank us through Ford's fun. Really appreciate it. It's been like, really interesting as well. Uh, we're going to get the third Ben in because this is the first time that three Bens have been united on a sofa. We have a uh, tree Ben. Right, I'm t I'm t I, I, I feel like we need to have like nicknames, like True Ben. Um, I can just go with Benny, and then you can have the real Ben. <laughs> All right, fine. The real Ben. I'll be the I real like Ben. That. The real Ben. That's gonna stick now forevermore. What real Ben? <laughs> yeah, in the studio. That's what I'm gonna call you. Um, so should we? Uh, so motorways, right? Because we're, we're heading up to the motorways now. It's really exciting for like me and someone from Britain to kind of see the blue signs. Yes, right. the go the go really fast signs. Um, <laughs> so that there, yeah, there is something really eerie actually for for a Brit going down this stretch of road because it's it does feel very authentic, especially with all the um, average speed camera signs across the motorway, which is something that other British people will, will recognise. Um, but obviously we're going to blast past those way faster than 60 miles an hour, which is something I've always wanted to do in real life, but obviously never do because I'm a very <laughs> responsible person. So we've, we've got all the kind of like the details on the motorway as well. Like, I, I, I feel bad every time I talk to you, I keep going back to trees. It's just my habit. <laughs> it's like, oh, right, that's the kind of, because autumn, it's obviously so, so, so different to what we saw in summer last week. Sure. Um, so kind of using the trees as a basis, what kind of other changes are there in the world? Because you did promise us mud. Oh, yes. Yeah, so actually um, we're, we're hightailing it down the motorway towards um, a 4x4 adventure park, which is in, in the game world. Uh, and it's a, a real sort of showcase what we've been doing with uh, deformable surfaces and deformable mud, especially. Um, so yeah, so we're, uh, we're going to be showing off exactly how that changes up some of the, the driving experience there as well as the visuals. As I said, everything that we're showing here when it comes to autumn, it's not just about visuals, it's about how we're changing up the actual driving experience in the world as well. As, as it just starts to rain a little bit as well, because like, there, there was Absolutely. barely any rain last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, we, we, it, was, um, it was very much a mirror of the weather outside, wasn't it, last week? We're, uh, and actually, I've been watching you guys from the, the back of the room. You actually had quite a lovely blue, clear autumnal day. But as you can see at the moment, we're starting to get some of that real-time uh, weather conditions start to change and, and arguably be slightly more representative of a British autumn at the moment. So some of that mist is starting to roll in um, and you're starting to get a bit more rain. Um, PJ Tyranny has just come and asked as well, Ben. Oh. It's like, I, can, I can just say Ben and I'm always right. <laughs> right. Uh, PJ Tyranny uh, has just asked, do skill songs return? Skill songs, yes, they do very much return. Um, particular favourite of mine. I will not spoil how you get them because you will unlock them in a slightly that's, different way. That's just being a massive tease. <laughs> it's, like, it's just like, all right, yeah, they do return and I'm really excited. And yeah, that's, that's, that's all I'm telling you. Um, also, Krakenus has just asked, looks like a part of the M8 motorway outside Edinburgh, sweet beans, that was aces. So obviously a favourite part of the motorway for, for him. Yeah, that's, that's part, part of the M8, beautiful. <laughs> was he right? Um, do you know what, you actually might be right. Um, so with, we were obviously coming from the sort of northern part of the map, which is where Edinburgh sat, so, um, so yeah, it very well could have been taken from that particular section. Oh, and we are now getting to the, the mud tracks. Here you go, yeah. yeah. This is it. So you'll start to see all the other players tearing the place up uh, and really starting to, yeah, make it turn into a, a mud fest. Just, just look at that, the sink, I sink into that mud. Um, so can you talk us through a little bit about the, this, this area? Sure, yeah. So this is, this is inspired from a, a real-life um, off-road adventure park, which a couple of the guys, including Andy actually, uh, had the displeasure of having to visit in real life and drive their cars around and have a bit of fun in um, so that we could get all the reference and make sure it was all represented as accurately as possible. And um, it's translated really well. It's definitely one of the most fun areas in the game, I think, to, to play those um, playground arena type game modes like Infected and King. Um, as well as being a, a real cool looking place as well, especially at, at night, obviously we're in the day, but we've actually um, set the whole place up with lots of really cool festival touches, so you get lots of neon lighting that, that um, really sort of punctuates. So if, it, if it gets dark in time, because we, we don't have control of the weather, like, like, we like, don't. like, like, like real life, yeah. we don't have control of day or night. Uh, Krakenus has said, was I right? Thanks about the motorway. <laughs> we, we, we think so, right? That, that I, belie I believe you we were right. Do you think um, so? Yeah. The mud looks incredible. Like, what, what kind of work's gone into kind of getting it so it's just like this? So, yes, yeah, so we, um, we actually did a, a massive overhaul on the way we were representing um, 
variable levels of moisture in, in the world. It's something that's really important, obviously, to represent each of those seasons, and that, that obviously plays a big part of it in, the, in Britain. So yeah, so there's a, there's a, a system that analyzes the whole world for different dips and divots and finds out where water would collect and which surfaces it would collect. Shall we go into the event as well to sure. kind of like try out the, like see, see it in action in the event? Because I think we can, we can have some fun, right, towards the, towards the end of the stream. Guys, keep your questions coming in as well. t said that the formation looks so good. Nice work. So like, <laughs> it, it is absolutely mind blowing though, like kind of the level of detail and how much the world changes from season to season. Because yeah. if you went there in summer, what would that be like? Yes, yeah, so all the all the mud in summer obviously gets really compact and hard. See, so it's a very different experience, and you're you're able to, well, you're not able to throw the car around maybe quite as easily as you would when everything's a little bit wetter and a little bit slicker. Right, so which, which event are we going into? I miss I miss the event. We are going to go into a race around the four x four park. Right, we, should, we, should we see if we do a little uh, like lap challenge, see Andy to set, set a time and then the, uh, the Bens can go at it, see who can get the, uh, the fastest lap? No, don't do that, he'll, I mean he'll win. But don't, don't, have confidence <laughs> in yourself. You are the tree man, right? It's not, I know the mud. Yeah, yeah. Wait, this just reminded me, yeah. soil. So, so, oh, right. don't make me talk about soil, Helen. Right, this is the level of detail there is in this game. <laughs> like, it blew my mind. Like, you can tell the differences of quality of soil based on... Yeah, so, so like, before we go down that rabbit hole... Um, so, yeah, so, so we, we do... Like I said, we have, like, a, a piece of tech that, that finds out where water would be pooling in the world. So, so we sort of use that to translate to um, how much moisture would be in the, in the ground and how healthy a tree might be. So, so a tree that is around a more moist area of the world might hold on to its greens for longer, say, so it'll be more green in autumn and less sort of like those autumnal colours starting to come through. So it's, a, it's a nice little detail that we, uh, we threw nice, in. Nice little change. Yeah. And Mr. True Man says, can confirm Britain is muddy. Oh, yeah, that's true. That yeah. is true. That is, that is definitely true. We, and, we, and mud is fun, mud, it turns out. Yeah. Well, it, it depends. Like, if you're, if you're in a big 4x4, four four, it's going to be a lot oh, of fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you get do. stuck in, the, in some wellies, not so much. Oh, I see. I think that is quite fun on a level. But yeah, you're right, in a 4x4, four four, it's, uh, it's, it's more fun. It's more fun. Yeah. Um, Branko says, never been an off-road guy, but the mud looks awesome. I, I think that's the thing you can go more into this, is the different styles of driving that you get in Horizon 4. Yeah, so we've put loads and loads of work into the kind of um, like road, asphalt-based driving versus yeah. the kind of off-road stuff. So trophy trucks like this are even more effective at just driving in a ridiculous speed across uneven terrain in a straight line as fast as possible. Um, the suspension work, you can see the wheels through the bodywork there at the back, just soaking up everything. Should, should we take a look at a different uh, view? Should we, Andy, should we have a look at cockpit view so we can kind of see the mud? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> see? <laughs> so this is because I was talking about how good he was at the games. So. Yeah, and then suddenly yeah. we asked for a cockpit change. And this, this is why I did it. <laughs> it's all over the place. Yeah, so you can just see how much kind of the car is soaking up all the terrain. Um, but then take this onto the road and, you know, it starts to kind of understeer a bit. It's got a bit less um, grip, whereas a hypercar on the road is absolutely perfect. And maybe they weren't as affected, um, hypercars going off-road kind of in the past, but now in Horizon 4 we've really started to like push it a bit so the, the differences between the cars yeah. are enhanced, which means you really start to, especially with um, the ability to change car anywhere in the world, you really start to, to notice the advantages of driving. I wouldn't say the right car because you can have fun anywhere you drive in any car. Don't get me wrong, driving a hypercar in this race is still very much a fun thing to do, but it's probably more effective if you're going for, say, the fastest time or something like that, to be in a, in a car that's kind of built for these environments. Right, you can kind of have a different choice of car, different, more different experience, which is really cool. Yeah. Also, another question. Why did Ben choose red flags for the race? Oh, man. Right, OK. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, so on the subject of developer builds, <laughs> there is a bug in this uh, particular build of the game that has given us these lovely red balloons and red flags, um, which, which isn't, it wasn't a... That wasn't an art choice, no. no. I, I never normally question colours. <laughs> do you like that shade of red? Uh, I don't know, I can't see it. Well, do you know what, we're going to change it anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, that's, that's development builds for you. Right, yeah. so what, what, was, what was that time? What was that time? I, th I, I feel like Ben and Ben should all have one lap each, right, to kind of see who is the... Uh, as we come up to the end of the stream. Absolutely, can I go last? 
Yeah, Would? fine. Is that fine? Yeah, absolutely fine. Right, one, one, you've got, the time to beat is one minute. Looks like one minute 30, I think I just saw. One, one, <laughs> one minute 30, I saw one minute like 0.09 or something along those lines. So we're gonna get into that, guys. Prediction, all right, in the chat, who do you think is going to win? Tree Ben or the real Ben, okay? <laughs> Tree Ben, let's just put in the chat, can, we, can we put a poll up? Can we put a poll up, um, if possible? Right, vote if we if we have time. Marks is like no. <laughs> if we have time, to put a poll. otherwise in the chat, right? Tree or real? Tree or real? <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. Right, real is on the sticks. See, the problem is when I do this, I'm just going to get distracted by the red flags. Don't get distracted by the red flags. And the trees. And the trees. Just constantly distracted. <laughs> right, here we go. So I Should thought Andy was going to leave this on manual gears, which would be the, just the end of me. I'd never live like that. <laughs> Oh, did he have the common courtesy to switch it back to automatic? He did, oh, he did, so we're playing in uh, <laughs> a more accessible way. <laughs> of course, I'm, I'm brilliant at this game, manual or automatic. <laughs> That's right. Tree, you know tree, I mean? tree you have got the, you've got the lead at the moment. 70% are saying <laughs> that you are going to win this tree. Right, OK. They might, they, I, well, I'm, I'm hoping they're not putting money on it. Um, also, I am Glass has just asked the question, is the train from Harry Potter in the game as a landmark? Because we did see that viaduct earlier. So, so you will see a steam train uh, shooting across that viaduct uh, from time to time. Is yes. there going to be a flying car like kind of in front of it as well? Uh, maybe not that, no. But yes, yeah, uh, it's, quite, it's quite a cool site actually. We were, we were doing the, a rehearsal for this earlier and it was perfect timing. We saw the steam train going across the, uh, the viaduct and sure enough we said it probably wasn't going to happen during the stream and it didn't. Um, <laughs> But yes, people playing the game will, will be delighted to see it, wouldn't it? Tree, Tree is definitely getting a lot of support. Right, real, you need to step up. You're the real uh, Ben, you need to step step this up and like pull this off. Right, because what's your fastest lap time at the moment? Oh, you've, you've got a 194, 994. This is close. I, I, I have faith and I, I, I'm kind of going for you, right? Because I feel like everyone is voting for Tree. <laughs> this could be the first time the internet is disproved. <laughs> if, if only. <laughs> We're, we're, we're going to see as well. What, what other, like, we, cause this, this week we are looking at um, autumn. I think it'd be a good time as well to start talking a little bit about what we're going to be looking at next week. Because sure, last week yeah. we looked at summer, right? This week, autumn. What are we looking at next week, Ben? So, um, obviously, we're sticking with the chronological order that we've gone with so far. So, uh, so next week we're going to be looking at uh, winter, which is obviously a dramatically different looking landscape to anything we've seen so far. Uh, lots of snow, ice, frost very different driving experiences um, so yeah it should be should be fun right, I, I'm pretty excited because everyone is like quite a few people have said it's one of their favorite seasons as well don't look off the road right keep your eyes on the road you have a lap time to beat concentrate real Ben right you, there's 30 percent of the pit of the audience <laughs> I'm rooting for you to do this is that my prove point? that 30 percent and uh, Mr. Sneaky says trees coming home Right. Yeah. The football's not coming home, but tree, uh, you're coming home. Surely too soon. It so, is. Yeah, you know, you got to laugh about it, don't you? It's, yeah, that's true. You do, it's, you it's the only way. Um, and we're we're in Britain, so. Yeah, actually, uh, it's worth mentioning the part of Britain we're in at the moment, I guess, because this is something we haven't been through yet. Uh, so this is uh, based on the um, Yorkshire Moors. Ah. So in uh, in the summertime, all of that heather turns a beautiful so shade of purple as well, which is quite a striking visual. Okay. Right. Gonna stop wait, wait. Let's see the colors. time. Best lap was a 59. You beat Andy. Of course. <sighs> oh, Andy's in second place right now. Can I just hit restart? Okay. Yeah. So, all right. This is a step up. But also, um, I like this qu this uh, quote from Lamacroz from the chat. Did someone say winter is coming? Because yes, it is. Next week, <laughs> it will be here. But we now need Tree to do his lap. Like every, everyone in the show is rooted behind you. I'm sorry. <laughs> you do, you do realise everybody in the studio is going to call me Tree now. I'm really. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's going to happen. Sorry, Tree. <laughs> <laughs> My aunt's called Tree. <laughs> oh, oh, really? That's that's good. So, all right. What else are showing in the uh, in the coming weeks? I think we. Gonna have a bit of a visit to Edinburgh, Ben. Oh yeah, yeah, we will absolutely will. I've seen a few people in the chat asking for that actually. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we will. We will be going to Edinburgh and driving, driving the streets. I think. Um, so we've obviously got we've got winter coming next, and then we'll have spring. At some point, we're going to have a look at um, Team Adventure, which is our kind of competitive team-based multiplayer mode. That's going to be really exciting. Um, we'll have a look at a new feature I really like called Car Mastery, which is. Um, mm -hmm. I won't put 
too many spoilers, but it's, it's uh, kind of progression for every car in the game, so that's really cool. So, so we're going to see next couple of weeks car mastery, right? Because remember, guys, every Tuesday for the next couple of weeks, we're taking a look at a different season. So 7 p.m. same time. So follow the stream, put notifications on. Uh, next week is winter, which is going to be pretty exciting as well. And we get to see trees and snow, I believe. Oh yeah, well you'll get to see everything in Snow Benny, like the whole, the whole lot. The, the yeah. whole thing, because the think, thing Oh is... my God, see, you made me look away. See, <laughs> stay, stay, keep your eyes on the road. I can't talk and drive at the same time. Um, also, also, for those wondering as well, we are going to take one last look at the map before the end of the stream, because um, I know that's one of the big things that was shown today early on. So for those of you that didn't see that, we're going to be showing that once a tree has I mean, managed to complete. Yeah, luckily I'm doing this in record time. You've got one minute, you've got a one minute one so far. So you just need to shave uh, like two and a bit seconds off. Oh, really? Right. So, is that but, true? You, but this is your hot lap. That's so depressing. Yeah, you'll be okay. okay. You'll make it. Right. Right. You've got, you've got it. You've got it. Um, Shinyold says Tree Ben's life has been ruined oh. by this stream. <laughs> <laughs> you should get like a little mini uh, tree on your desk. That's I, like... I, I feel if I don't get one, somebody will get one for me um, after this. Right. You, you are. Wait. I'm intrigued by this. By your time so far, because you've got a 158. Oh, it's wait. Actually, it's gonna be close. Could you do it on this first go? Because if so, uh, uh, no. Right, you need you need to do better. You need to do better. Right. right. Okay. Right. I, I might have to go completely silent now, Ben. I'm sorry. Don't. Okay. Well, well me and I me and the real Ben will uh, yeah, talk about can. next week. Um, so next week, once again, seven o'clock. Well, Mastery, what other things can we expect to see in the next couple of weeks? Uh, I think we will we'll show off a lot of exciting things. I'm not... I put you on the spot right now. Yeah. I'm just like, what stuff can you tell us about? Because um, I think it's one of the great things about this stream. We saw last week, we, we're learning about so many new features from Horizon 4. We're learning, we're seeing new parts of the world. We're just seeing like the maps, a bit more about barn finds today. Yeah. Um, we've seen that Tree is currently losing the race, which is a shame. Forza th <laughs> we did an entire Forza on Live. Yeah, Forza on Live, which is going to be really exciting. Daily, weekly challenges as well within Forza on Live. Loads of way of earning like new items for the game. Um, so once Ben or Tree, sorry, has uh, finished finished his lap because he's a few seconds away, is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? And he let down the internet. Oh. Right. <laughs> 70% oh. of the chat was wrong, um, but Sarugu says these graphics are out of this world. Game looks stunning. Should we have one last look at the map before we uh, before we finish up the stream for today? Uh, guys, remember do hit that follow button um, so you don't miss next week's stream. Um, but what, what else before we have the, that as well? How can uh, people get the game when it comes out? Uh, so they can. Oh, Ben, sorry, um, I will get something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> How can people get the game? Um, Xbox Store. Yep. They uh, can um, pre-order it now. There's multiple versions to get. Um, you'll find that on xbox.com. Yeah, because the, the Ultimate Edition comes out on the 28th of September. It's got four days early access, doesn't it? So there's early access, yeah, for the Ultimate Edition. And then the game itself comes out on the 2nd of October. Which is also available on, on Xbox Game Pass. Game Pass on the same day, yeah. Um, which is really cool. So for those of you that have got Xbox Game Pass, you can get it on the on 2nd of October. Let's take one final look at the map. And also, guys, if you've got any questions, do drop them in the chat. We will still be able to see those questions. And we could maybe answer them on next week's stream as well. Uh, but one final look. Which, which is your favorite part of the world? Oh, um, do you know what? I actually really do love Edinburgh. I know we've talked about showing it later on. Um, we're kind of saving that for a bit because it's, it's a real special part of the map. There it is. It's the, especially, it's a nice little tease. Especially at night. It's, it's a real... It's a real visual feast for the eyes. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the visual tree. Yeah. Is there lots of trees? <laughs> there are actually not that many trees. <laughs> More buildings, a surprise for Foliage, us. bushes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Around the edges. Um, um, yeah, everyone for watching. Thank